he also helped me get the gig without Blakey once he was ready to leave. He thought I was ready, so he said, "Come on, come audition." And he how was, how was that like the audition? Oh, oh man, that was scary. <laughs> That was scary. You know? Yeah. you know the cartoon things where you know when somebody's scared and you see their knees shaking. Yeah, I didn't know that was real until that moment. <laughs> <laughs> until that moment, I thought that was just a a cartoon thing, you know. And that really happened to me. I was like, "Wow!" <laughs> I experienced that for the first time. You know that that kind of fear. You know, being in standing in front of Rob Blakey. You know. But what, what did you have to play? I mean, who, who was there? Oh, we just played the blues. You just played the oh, blues. Oh, okay. You know? Yeah, yeah. So it's not about you know about putting you on the spot. It's just putting you you know you know. So you you play something that you know, definitely. You know. Yeah. And I, I was able to get the gig, and I kept for, for over four years, which was a long time. That's a long but, time. But uh, and I learned a lot from that, and traveled the world with him. You know. We played everywhere. Yeah. So you, you were like so, what, twenty one, right, or twenty two when you when you got the yeah, 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 early twenties, yeah, wow. early twenties, yeah, wow. and you know, so yeah, that was that was incredible because coming from that school environment in Boston to that traveling the world, you know, it's it was night and day, you know, <laughs> one from one day you're a student doing this and that. And yeah. the next, you go into Paris. You go, you know, That's crazy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, for the first time, you know. Where was it, the first was place incredible. you went with Art? Actually, the first place I went with Art was outside of the United States. Was yeah. uh, we went to England, England, and we okay. played. Uh, we played in Newcastle. We did a TV show in Newcastle. Wow. Okay. Yeah, yeah. We didn't even play in London. We just went to England. Went up to New castle did this tv show and then from there we we went over to europe and did did some gigs wow that's amazing yeah so yeah how was he like to you guys to to the younger guys i mean as did you know obviously he uh, forced forced you i mean like he pushed you to write music and but like yeah. still like as a band leader how, how because he had like an amazing band of you yeah guys well, in Art, early 20s i mean that was an incredible band leader because He required that you do your best. A lot of mm. a lot of band leaders, they, they, their ego kind of get in the way of the music. Yeah, you know. And if they have a, a a person that they've hired that is that is doing really well and getting praise, then they kind of like get messed up about that and yeah. start to get jealous about it. And you know, for art, the music was. You know, music was the most important aspect of us being on that bandstand, and we had to do our best. And he was so confident in himself; he had so much. And by the time I got to him, you know, I mean, he was already a legend of legend, <laughs> a legend of legends. You know, he was already that. So he didn't; he wasn't afraid of anybody shining. And outshining him, you know, because that that was impossible, you know. So he required that we do the best that we can, and that kind of environment, you can only grow, yeah, because you're being encouraged to do your best, and you're being taught by one of the best ever in the business, you know. <laughs> to you know, so it, it was, you know, you couldn't you couldn't go wrong if you. If, if if you really listen and adhere to the lessons that he would give, you know, and, and he taught it all through the music. He yeah. never really verbally explained anything. It was all through playing. So all his cues were playing cues. And you learn those cues pretty quickly yeah, from, you know, after, after a couple of months, you, you knew, you know, how to go, what to do, you know, when he wanted you to raise your solo or, Or when he wanted you to stop, or you know, or when he wanted you to play on, you know, he, he did all the different cues that that yeah. sort of taught taught you how to do that. And we learned from that. And we learned all those things we can take and put into compositions, you know. 
And, and so he was teaching us how to write. He was teaching us how to play. He was teaching us how to perform. He was teaching us how to communicate to the audience. Yeah. That's you know, all through the music, you know, all through the music. And that's, you know, you don't have that, those kind of bands anymore. You know, I mean, it's gone now, you know. Yeah. And it's up to us, the guys who were messengers, to pass that knowledge on to new players coming up. That's the only way they're going to get it now. Yeah. Because you don't have those bands like Art Blake and the Jazz Messengers going around anymore. You know, yeah. that's all finished. <laughs> yeah. 